Hey guys, um, I've got to make an arbor for this drill chuck I bought it here in Forbes. Um, this has got a J6 Jacobs uh, taper in that, that end, and it's a half inch, nice half inch keyless chuck. I want to set it up on the tail stock here, and as lots of you know, um, this tail stock taper is non-standard. Uh, it's been a bit of a problem actually. Um, it's not a Jacobs ta taper, it's a two degree taper like this one. And this one was a one that a mate made. Um, fairly impressed with that. And that's going to get a start on it. We're going to turn this up between centres. We're going to put this taper on one end and a J6 on the other one. What I've got um, is this cheapy drill taper. It's just a just an arbor. The J6 on that end and a Morse taper on the other end. Uh, we're not going to try and turn that down or anything stupid because I bet it's hard. But we will use it to copy. We'll turn it between centres and set the cross slide up and the compound slide up and um, we'll make a taper to match and we'll put the the launch taper on the other end and hopefully we'll have something that's a bit good and we might get it hardened and polished. Um, anyway, so today this piece of tool steel arrived. It's B2 from Interloy. It seems to be nice stuff. I've used it before. It, it um, machines nice and it's pretty stable when you harden it and it will harden pretty hard and come back down to a good temper. Um, so this is a piece of 20mm bar. I bought 300mm of this because I might need it somewhere. So um, what I'm going to do is get the hacksaw and cut a bit off for a start and um, we might machine the ends and uh, set it up uh, between centres. So here we go, I chopped this off with the hacksaw. Um, a word or two about hacksaws. You can buy these cobalt hacksaw blades that aren't particularly expensive. Um, this one isn't a flash brand, it's an ultra um, by hard and 24 tooth blade for for a good start. These were about $3.50 each I think. Now they outlast and they outcut anything you can get in high speed steel or, or carbon steel or any other crap. These are fantastic blades. Um, now, the other big secret is to buy a decent hacksaw. This is by no means a hack, decent hacksaw, but it is solid, and it's got an adjuster here. Now, I do have somewhere a hacksaw that's got a, a grip handle. That's not so good either, because if you squeeze it tight, um, the handle unclips and swings the blade out of the way to loosen and tighten it. If you squeeze it tight, the blade comes out. So that's a fool of a thing. But this is quite good. Um, another feature that this hacksaw has is that it comes apart here. So in this tube, there's space to store your hacksaw blade. So you can always find them. That's a yeah, huge thing for me. Um, but that's a good hacksaw. Uh, well, it's an average hacksaw. It stays nice and tight, and it's nice and rigid, and it's comfortable to hold. So that's the hacksaw I use. I think hacksaws are a great tool, really. In, yeah, in home workshop, there's lots of uses for them. Um, this is another one <laughs> that I, I picked up somewhere. Don't buy one of these. Um... It has two nuts to tension it here. Uh, I'll put it down here and we'll move away so you can get a decent view of it. I haven't got a blade in it because it's really a waste of a hacksaw blade. But um, it's a terrible thing. Um, 
there's that hand and that end. Now it's all wobbly in the middle if you have a look um, and it's pretty rotten really um, excellent idea not to buy one of those if you ever get presented with the opportunity um, walk away just, just step right back and um, Go and buy a decent one. So that's hacksaws. So I cut this off. Another really smart idea is when you cut off your piece of bar, one end's got paint on it, which tells you um, pretty much what sort of steel it is. This one's red and black. It's B2 tool steel. Um, that's a pretty much a fantastic thing to do is to cut the other end off. Uh, if you're going to hacksaw or, or, or cut an end off a piece of bar stock, make sure you leave the paint on one end so you know what it is next time. So, there you go. That's another useful tip from Emma's workshop. So, I've faced both ends, and it's the right length, and I've centre drilled them. Um, I put a little step on there to fit my carrier, because I never had a 20mm a one, but... Um, more of that soon. Now how did I drill those holes if I haven't got a drill chuck yet? Well I made this. Um, this is just a taper and I drilled it from the chuck and put a put a grub screw in it so it's a nice, the, the drill's a nice neat fit in there and that's put out two, it must be pretty good because it's put a shaving out each side of the drill when I put it in and um, I've drilled them ready to go between senders. So the next job will be to set it all up with a carrier and um, before then even we're going to have to set the taper of this cross slide so so I guess the next thing is to use the sender and to set up our other taper and make the Jacob's, ta uh, Jacob's taper on one end. So I've set this up now. Um, just set up this taper between the centres. This one and this one. And I've set up a DTI here with magnetic stand. Um, and turned the top slide round until this needle seems to run at about zero. That's not out and not far out now. It all looks pretty good. So that's that done. I've tightened the boots up. The bolts up. Um, this is an old Tetlock indicator that I found or was given. Um, gave it a service. Needs a glass in it still, but it's a good indicator. Um, seem to use that a lot. And this little mini mini magnetic stand's a great thing too. Um, one bolt seems to unlock lock it and lock it, and it fits just about all my indicators, so that's good. And it's got a decent little magnet in it. It's a bit shorter than the ones that are the, the normal ones, so there's room for jobs like this. So. Next job, I guess, is to set the the new taper or the new arbor up between centres with a with a carrier. Put the carrier plate on. That's it there, and um, get ready to do some machining.